Hello and welcome to Vampire the Masquerade. We are just concluding night one. And moving onwards to night two. December 2024. Six nights till New Year. When I finally claw myself out of the well of slumber, the sun has only barely set. Kali is still fast asleep. Laid out on my couch like the corpse that she is. Who knows how long until she stirs. I kill time the way I always do. I plunge into the unknown of novels, essays and treatises, looking for even the barest mention of inner voices, the briefest explanation of their purported providence. My research so far has been fruitless, and tonight is no exception. I hope. Vitra comes through on the promise soon enough. A flicker of movement catches my attention as Kali's eyes crack open, but I continue looking at the dusty page in front of me. Let's be a bit friendly at least. Good evening. I hope you sep well. Listen, um, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I've slept on bags of bricks more comfortable than your couch. Which is fine. Good for your spine or so, I've heard. Truth be told, I don't know what else I expected of her. Fortunately, you need no longer trouble yourself with matters of backbone. Be they physical or moral. Wow, I see you're the opposite of cranky in the evening. So, did I snooze through or anything noteworthy? I jot down one last note and carefully close the book before finally glancing up at her. She is sitting up right now and squints around the room in a bit of a daze. That would depend on your definition of noteworthy. But I have been pondering our next steps. Oh, do tell. I have been working for the Anarchs for the past two years and forged friendly relations with some of them, Torque included, although in this particular case I would rather avoid his presence. Trouble in Paradise? Hilarious. Trouble in the Bronx. Torx is more than occupied with the current going on within his turf. He may have neither time nor patience for a visit. Pity. Um, so what do you propose then? I look out the window, collecting my thoughts into a coherent stream. The allegations against your sire. See, I happen to know someone who used to be deeply entrenched in the darker corners of the Red Market. An anarch, working not too far from here. If Cassell truly wields as much influence as the court suggests, my contact could offer substantial aid. Hmm, substantial, you say? Wow, can't argue with that. Except it's a no-go, amigo. Again, with her insufferable slang. I repeat the words, trying to get used to the shape in my used to their shape in my mouth. A no-go, amigo. Look, I get it. You have friends and contacts aplenty, but so do I. Also, I know Reynard Cassell's like the back of my head. We've been dealing all around the city, on and off, for almost two years. There's gotta be somebody here who knows where he bailed. I'm sure her lengthy elab elaborations will lead to a point someday. Um, I can see her hesitation as if she's mulling over something in her head. I wonder what she's trying to conceal now. There's this one guy who hangs around Harlem. Eli Sinceric. Apparently he's one of the few kindred that didn't burn with hatred for Reynard. So it must mean they were getting along. Bewilderment surges through me. Eli Sinceric. The serpent. Why? You'd, you'd have something against them? Hmm. The bait she dangles in front of my eyes is not even that tasty, but very well. I will bite. Do you have 
the slightest inkling about what Senseric is capable of. A veritable river of memories floods my mind, showing me the atrocities committed by the Setites in just the past two years. Kali doesn't seem to know much about Senseric, but the def but she definitely definitely doesn't like the look on my face. Go on, enlighten me. To put it blindly, only in the most desperate situation would anyone with an ounce of sincerity consider seeking out Ellie Senseric. A perfect lead, given my circumstances. I can go find him now, have a little check and be back in no time. I sigh inward. That child still thinks she's capable of tricking me. Fool me once, Kali. We could go find him, but it's far from the best course of action at the moment. Senseric is known to be extremely dangerous and territorial. We should not take him lightly. I propose we go to the Anarchs first. At least there, we will not be in danger of losing our heads. You've, you're being so traumatic. We're gonna be fine. What's the worst that can happen? I stare at her incredulously. Senserix deeming us an enemy and resorting to medieval methods of extracting information. We could split the party, you know. Again? We most certainly should not. See, I think. Not only does she not listen to reason, but she also has the attention span of a hamster. She waves at me defensively as she rummages through her belt bag. Uh, whoops, sorry. I think I reached my limit here. Uh, how about we just flip a coin? Heads, we go to Senseric. Tails, we go to Harlem. Fool me twice. You mean the Bronx. She grimaces aghast that I caught her twisting reality and rolls her eyes. Uh, fine, fine, uh, call it already. I'm about to open my mouth to demand that we toss one of my coins, as I'm sure she's about to use some sort of um, chicken chickenery on hers. But my voice is erupted into a deafening cacophony. Yes, 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 she'll win, she'll win, she'll... She'll win, lad, she'll win. I grab my ring and twist it, desperately chasing away the din. Choose, choose, boy, we're gonna see Senseric. Yes, Senseric, we'll finally meet Senseric, Senseric, Senseric. Twenty. Finally. Blessed silence. So, if I choose, she will win. I look up at her and nod. All right, but you call it. She shrugs, grinning at me in delight. Suit yourself. It's your funeral. Heads. She tosses the coin and it glimmers in the warm light of the floor lamp, soaring through the air as it spins quicker than a wheel of fate. It lands on her outstretched hand and she flips it onto her palm, showing it to me confidently without even a glance. So sure that she is one. I look at it and feel a satisfied smile split my face in two. Tails. Fancy that. Seems like we're going to the Bronx after all. W what? The utter shock on her face is truly delightful. I don't think I've ever seen somebody's eyes bulge out of their skull so intensely. She stays silent for a while, just staring at the coin in her hand in disbelief. Then she rises her head and shoots me an accusatory look. Um, best out of three? Best two out of three? And I just smile. I'll just ignore her. Come on, we can take my car. I get up from the armchair and start putting on my coat. She follows suit, cursing under her breath all the while. Uh, who would have thought all I needed to gain her obedience was to crush her in a simple game of chance? Yeah, your car. Wait, you mean that black rattle drop out front how dare she it's a perfectly serviceable vehicle whose minuscule size allows for with a dismissive wave she cuts short my eloquent defense of my car you know what 
How about we just go on uh, so that we can enjoy your minuscule vehicle in silence? I never say no to an offer of peace and quiet. And we're heading for the Bronx. We're heading to the Anarchs, where my friend and informant Mato will hopefully have some insight into the whereabouts of Kali's sire. As it turns out, silence is not what happens when Kali gets into her car. She manages maybe half a minute of quietly looking around before her curiosity latches onto the selection of cassette tapes I have collected over the years. Another Bohemian Rhapsody? Seriously? I exaggerate the furrows of my brows, putting on a puzzled expression. Huh, I thought I only had one of them. Terrific! She bursts into laughter. God forbid you get into the tie you get with the times, but how about a legit car radio? You know to update your playlist? Says the one sporting a Walkman on her belt. She shrugs, seemingly offended. Is she trying to hide it? I like choosing what I listen to in the car, even when sometimes it happens to be Queen. Just saying, you're missing out on a whole lot of a uh, lot if you ignore stuff from the 21st century. The music scene's been booming. Ever heard of K-pop? You're giving off some serious sighing energy, my guy. Sighing. I've never heard about this band, but I'm willing to try it. Do you think you have any of them? Do you think any of them have released cassette tapes? Aside from our contrasting views on modernity, our little journey proceeds smoothly, which is perfectly fine for me, but some kind of personal hell for Kali. She twitches in her seat, picking at her nails and bouncing her foot, and I'm just waiting for her to finally burst. Holy shit, watch out! There it is, a disappointing attempt at diverting my attention towards nothing. The streets are as quiet as they come. We're gonna crash and seriously, are you a robot or what? No, just a seasoned. No, just seasoned and in the right mind. But she does have me intrigued. Mm -hmm. For friendly advice. Next time you try to scare somebody, be a bit more specific. It adds believability. Ah, but what was that really about? Ah, j just the traffic driving me nuts. I thought I'd stir up a little chaos, a little bit of anarchy. Ah, of course. Is that your subtle way of inquiring about a seemingly touchy subject? You tell me. Then brace yourself for disappointment. My run-ins with the Anarchs aren't nearly as thrilling as you might hope. I pause briefly to collect my thoughts and start from the beginning. I landed in New York about two years ago. Shortly after, I managed to save a handful of kindred, mostly of the Anarch variety, although I do believe there was some Camarilla in the mix. I earned me what I would call tentative trust from Torque, and not much else as you might have assessed back in Elysium. Wow, how noble. So how did you go from kindred hero to Camarias Goofer? Gopher. I have to stop for a moment and consider the trajectory of my own life, especially since this kind of professional transition has happened to me more than once. I have a knack for playing peacemaker, apparently. And while Tor considers it an asset, the Camarilla thinks it's a chink in his armor. Compromise is really in their vocabulary, you know. She snorts inelegantly. Oh, I definitely do know. Uh, but you saved some Camarilla kindred as well. Why not start with them and uh, curry some favor? They're the fat cats of New York, right? I level her with an amused look. I am caitiff, Kali. My kind is not exactly welcome around the ivory tower. 
She goes quiet for a long while, squirming uncomfortably in her seat like an unwanted spat, spread flung back out to sea. Then she abruptly changes the subject. So we have the Camarilla and the Anarchs. That's pretty much standard fare. Anybody else to keep an eye out for? My heart skips a figurative beat. There is someone, in fact, whom I really do not wish to mention. No. She eyes me suspiciously, but my face is inscrutably blank. Right. How about cool stories about the Anarchs? You seem to gel with them the most. Silence, lad, silence. Tell her nothing. Shut your gob. My hands automatically come together and my fingers start fidgeting with the ring. Ruin, carnage, calamity. Guard your secrets well, boy. Come on, I'm dying of boredom here. You must have some wild tales to tell. Something not found in your pile of books. She'll see through you. The parasite, the husk, the end bringer. The friend, the confidant. One more spin. 20 on the die. Interesting that this one voice is telling me she's a friend. My head falls quiet and my hands relax on the steering wheel. Well, no wild tales of my own, but I have spent my fair share of time talking to people. And some of them had amazing adventures. There you go. What kind of people they were, were they? Then bloods, for the most part. I was particularly interested in one called Sana, but mentioning her tends to shut conversations down. Probably because she met her final death four years back, at the hand of the sheriff, no less. Kadir? Wow. She must have really stirred the pot. Well... She did go on a mortal killing spree, but I am not one to judge whether or not the punishment fit the crime. Well, I know a thing or two about walking the line between right and wrong, so I don't think I'm in any place to judge her either. Still, what pushed her to do it? Kali seems to be a bit of an airhead, so even if she knows about Sana and my research, she's, it's unlikely she'll discover anything about my identity or worse, my... Suspicion about the one true voice in my head, right? Right? She... She claimed she was acting under orders from Cain, urging her to kill. He allegedly told Sana the end of the world is nigh, and somehow that devolved into a killing spree. And she never questioned why the creator of our whole species would specifically choose her? Just straight up went on a rampage? Well, maybe the voice was really convincing, Kali. Maybe she went through all the other possible answers and none of them fit. Or maybe she was just simply, truly insane. I don't say that out loud, of course, but I really want to. Look, I'm just telling you what I've heard. I never met Sana myself. I just found her condition... Fascinating. She waves her hand defensively. Hey, no need to get worked up. <laughs> I glanced at your uh, research notes. I know you're really into the inner voices stuff. I'm not judging, it's just... I don't want to know where this is going. <laughs> Let her talk. We can end this conversation anytime you want, really. It's just that you have some really niche hobbies, you know. May I interest you in, don't know, crocheting or something? It's a lot less intense than chasing crazies. My loud, long-suffering sigh successfully ends our conversation, but there is a gallingly satisfying grin on her face. I pull, I pull up to Amato's shop, much to Kali's bewilderment. Are, are you sure this is the spot? Uh, I can ask for directions or something. I ignore her and focus on parking, slowly and carefully aligning my car with the curb 
Last time I left it here, somebody tore off one of the side mirrors, so some precautions are definitely in order. Finally satisfied, I turn the engine off. Let's go. And I get out of the car. It takes her a while to follow suit. Did she expect some kind of ceremony? But she catches up as I set foot into the shop. Matu, are you here? A huge, burly kindred steps out from the shadows, quieter than a mouse. His grime covers arms are all set to give me a bear hug, but I managed to stop him with a warning look. Paddy, looking good, my man. What can I do you for? Need me to take a look at that old clunker of yours? My clunker is in top char shape. Thank you, Mato. Besides, I can see you are rather busy tonight. Still, I hoped you would have a moment for a few questions, though. It won't take long. Mato erupts into laughter, patting me on the shoulder. Thankfully, I'm now well acquainted with his habits and managed to brace myself in time so Mato's gigantic hand doesn't throw me off balance. Not this time, at least. Anything for you, man. And speaking of, who's this you've brought? Mato's gaze cuts right through Kali. His hawkish eye surprisingly cool and sharp, despite his rugged exterior. She seems to sense that he's sizing her up expertly and tries to puff up a bit, to no avail. Mato, meet Kali. She's got in a bit of a situation with the ivory tower. You see, well, to put it short, her execution is on hold, provided she delivers the counselor sire's head on a silver platter. Mato lets out a long whistle in grudging respect. Damn. What's your sire accused of? That's kind of what we're trying to piece together. Ever come across a lick who goes by Reynard Cassell? Reynard, huh? Can't say it rings a bell. What's his deal? Blood trade, among other things. On purpose, I say the words quietly, sharply, with no hesitation. I've learned that with Mato. There's no use in beating around the bush, and that the topic of blood trade is an extremely touchy subject for him given his Tremere heritage. Best rip that band-aid off as quickly as possible. Mato remains silent and motionless for a moment, while the tension in the air builds like a wall. I left that shit behind, man. You know that. Hmm. Let's be a little bit empathetic. I know it hurts. But it still follows, I know. I'm not here to open the old wounds. We just need a direction. Nothing more, nothing less. Surely there is somebody who stills in the loop, someone uh, who might have heard some rumors. He's avoiding my eyes, fiddling with the rag. Damn it, I might have pushed even further. I might have to push even further. I, I get it. It's a difficult situation for you, but um, I was really hoping you could help me out here. You know, I would not hesitate to reciprocate as I have in the past. Yeah, yeah, I know. He seems to be more resigned than irritated, but still refuses to speak. Eyes downcast, body language borderline deer in the headlights. His obstinacy is frankly extremely vexing. I'm about to double down on the guilt tripping, but when I shoot Kali a quick look, she smiles and steps forward. You see, I've, I've only known Paddy here for, what, a single night? Turns out that's more than enough to figure he's a pretty good at killing the vibe when he puts his mind to it. Paddy, to think I let her into my haven last night, ungrateful brat, and that traitor Mato laughing at my expense. She's trying to manipulate him, I get it, but it doesn't mean I'm any less irritated. Look, I don't know the first thing about you, 
the whole blood trade drama or whatever. That's none of my business. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to dig in your dirt. Survival's the game we're all playing, right? It's interesting, the way she speaks. Almost as if somebody put those words into her mouth. So I'll back off. Plus, I'm not in a spot where I really can afford to have anyone else in this town be pissed off at me. Yeah, gotcha, it's just that. Uh, no need to spell it out for me. Gnarly pasts are sort of my thing, you know. Let's just drop the whole shebang, alright? He nods hesitantly while she smiles and takes a few steps towards the motorcycle in the back. I gotta say though, you've got quite the setup here. Wait, is that a uh, CX-10R? Uh, what? Oh, right. Uh, picked it up super cheap from some uh, diva over in Long Island a few weeks ago. The guy had a nasty crash, pretty much wrecked it, but he had no clue about the jam he was letting go of. I will not lie, the moment they start chittering excitedly my ears fully shut off and my mind goes blank. I have never been interested in motorcycles, not even when they had me ride one back in the army. But it doesn't seem Kali and Mato are bonding over that mechanical monstrosity. But it does seem like they're bonding over that mechanical monstro monstrosity. Perhaps she can use that to our advantage. I come to when they are near the end of their conversation. Well, I'm always on the hunt for a good find. I can guarantee this model. I can't guarantee this model. But if I come across another butte like this, I could hold on to it for you if you're interested. You know what, I might take you up on that offer. I just gotta deal with this Camarilla situation first. Ah yes, a clever segue back to the root of our problem. She has softened Mato up, but it seems I'm the one to deliver the coup de grace. <laughs> Mention other contacts. Not sure how that would convince him. Let's say he's. I'm gonna be disappointed. It looks like the guy's like a bit socially awkward. Let's say I'm his only friend and I'll turn a cold shoulder. Well, nothing for us to do here. Come, Carly. Let's look for another source of intel. You mentioned having a contact of sorts. Sorry to bother you, Mato. And uh, thank you for your time. Kali winces a little and Mato looks at me with a profound sadness in his eyes. I quickly turn away. I'm not immune to the face of a scold puppy. See you around, I hope. And if not, uh, Petty here will give you my regards. Not her with her Petty again. But for what it's worth, our improvisation seems to have worked. We take only a few steps towards the exit when Mato curses under his breath and speaks up. Hold up. I shoot Kali a meaningful look, but it vanishes by the time we both turn around to the friendly giant, Mato snarling at the bottom lip and twisting the rack between his fingers. Yes. I, I really am out of this business, Paddy. I know, Mato. Still, some whispers find their way to my ears. Nobody likes gossip more than a bust up kindred. Ain't that the truth? Usually comes in real handy too. Yeah. So there's this thin blood alchemist. Skylar's her name. I think. She hangs around Sunnies a lot. Sunnies? Interesting. Empire of the Sun. It's local anarch dive. Yeah. Exactly. Sunnies. If anybody knows anything about the blood trade, it's her. She's the only albino around too, so you won't mistake her for none. Let's say Owen. Thank you, Mato. I will sure you repay this favor. Call up on me anytime you wish. I owe you big 
big time. Who knows? Y you might have saved my skin there. He gets a little flustered, waving his enormous hands around. Ah, don't mention it. Still, we should get going. Take care. Not so fast, Runt. And here I thought the stench of rot and sulfur would have alerted me to her presence. Miss Sorrento, what a pleasure. She glares at me, absolutely livid, and I fight to keep my wits about me, such a despicable woman. Torque needs you now. Does he now? Why? I came here to tell you, not to debate you, caitiff. Figure it out on your own. I can feel my teeth crack as I gnash them in a desperate attempt to keep my cool. Maim her, strangle her. I spin my ring until it lands on 20 and take back my mind. Fine. Let's get moving, Carly. I don't think you heard me right. Torque summoned you. Your Ravna's pup is not invited. She turns on her heel and walks off into the night before I can even roll my eyes. The clatter, clatter, cluttered car shop suddenly feels a touch more welcoming, as if starlight broke through after a storm. Mato gives me another one of those awkward shoulder pats, but I will admit it does have a relaxing effect on me. I find myself still clutching the ring, so I lower my hands before they attract too much attention. I mean, don't get me wrong, the company I usually keep is far from nice, but damn if she's not the bitchiest of them all. Yeah, kinda. Name's Mia. Torx Enforcer. Sort of big fish around here. I mutter angrily under my breath. Thankfully, there are always bigger fish in the pond. Easy, Paddy. You wouldn't want her catching wind of that. I clear my throat in a uselessly mortal manner. It seems I was right about Carly's company bringing out that part of me. Right. I believe that is our cue to go. Thanks again, Mato. Don't mention it. And hey, you're welcome back anytime. Both of you. You got it. Later. I can barely see Kali or my surroundings through the red mist of the fury. The voices in my head aren't even awake, but I still furiously spin my ring in the fruitless pursuit of peace of mind. And then Kali decides to speak up. Not gonna lie, I don't think I've ever met a kindred as charming and likable as Mato. What's his deal? Uh, where is he hiding the bodies? From what I gather, his skeletons are buried deep in his past. Mato used to be quite the skilled thaumaturge once, delving into the darker arts, albeit reluctantly. His sire can be quite intense. Aren't they all? Right. To my surprise, this mindless conversation helps me relax and forget about Mio, Mia, Sorrento, bossing me around. I straighten up a little and put my hand into the pockets of my coat, inhaling deeply as we walk. So what's the plan now? Um, I have to go see Torque. Yeah, I gathered, but scary enforcer lady made it clear I wasn't invited to the party. You'll just have to wait in the car then. Look, as much as I consider your perfectly serviceable car, to be excellent company, we both know I can't just sit around doing nothing. Uh, yeah. Maybe I could get you hold of a crochet kit for you. You could use a new hobby. Besides, it should not take too long. Oh, I've got hobbies, just so you know. Besides you and your endless debates, I'll be holding grey before you come back. And that's not even an option anymore. Seriously, you handle Torque. And I'll head over to Sunny's to look for that Skyler girl. That's not happening. Oh, come on. I've been the very model of temp 
temperance tonight. We're only been awake for mere hours. Splitting a hairs, I'm heading to Sunny to wait for you there, Scout's Honor. Stick together, together. You, you must have to, together, together. I sigh and rub tired, tiredly at my eyes. The night has just started, but I'm already longing for slumber. If we only had some means of long distance communication at hand, can you imagine what we could do if we were able to hear our voices from miles apart? Alas, uh, reality is much more cruel, at least under Camaria rules. We could always try using pigeons. New York's got no shortage of them. <laughs> so you're a comedian now. Hilarious. My mouth twitches, wanting to smile, but I manage to suppress it. Look, it seems we're out of options here. You'll have to come with me and wait for a bit. I'll figure out what Torque wants for me and then... Don't let her out of your sight. She will bring naught but doom. Engrossed in battle for mental control, I barely notice Kali's hand waving in front of my face. I keep spinning my ring as if my unlife depends on it. Because it probably does. Let her go, Fionn. Twenty. Finally. I breathe a sigh of relief and look at Kali seriously. All right. Um, let's meet at the Empire of the Sun in an hour. She gawks at me, jaw on the ground. H hold up, for real? Empire of the Sun. One hour. Do not let me down. And before she even has a chance to say anything remotely silly, I turn on my heel, hop into my car, and drive off the, into the night. Cruising through the streets of New York City, I let my mind wander to Sorrento's message and the urgency with which she delivered it. I can't be sure if this matter is as important as she made it seem. Sometimes Torque summons me when he's generally concerned about a well -be the well-being of the Anarchs, Sometimes it's to complain about the council being particularly vexing that night. Sometimes it's just to remind me where exactly I stand in the local food chain. Normally, I don't mind. The benefits I reap from having Torque's protection far outweighed all the indignities that await me night after night. He's useless. Thankless. What a dumb fuck. But I am... Somewhat occupied at present. So, Tork has better had have a damn good reason for summoning me like a genie from my lamp. Like a chin from my lamp. But to find out what he actually wants from us, you'll have to watch next episode. See you then. Take care.